so uh, we are going to uh, uh, continue uh, our previous due to into finite uh, dimension vector spaces uh, in the context of how we uh, had uh, these uh, transformations uh, orthonormal transformations <coughs> now uh, in this class we were going to uh, start with um, so to begin with uh, we'll uh, start with uh, linear functions linear functionals so so we have a n dimensional vector space uh, we know n dimensional vector space so basically we are going to study uh, linear functions on uh, inner vector products uh, uh, inner uh, product spaces uh, that's what what i would say not inner product not product spaces uh, so for an n times vector space uh, which is dual to uh, some space which is isomorphic uh, to some original space which is isomorphic to original uh, space so to, to each element in that uh, vector space uh, there is a unique element which can be mapped to that uh, dual space which is isomorphic in a sense uh, so uh, the point here is to mention that it's not necessarily that we will have a a dual space is waiting for there on to each yeah, pre existing space there is some uh, for your and dimensional space will have a dual space so we have to wait you have to create a dual space when that dual space exists then you can map to its original space so that freedom is in a sense curtailed so so the, the we thought that if there is an and dimensional vector space uh, it should have a dual space so this understanding has to be built what to down uh, so so the main uh, point of the theorem uh, which connects it is that uh, is that in a, in a that uh, the state the statement will make it clear that uh, inner product spaces spaces so there is a uh, natural correspondence Uh, between uh, correspondence uh, between uh, uh, space and its uh, dual space, but and the point is, so the only point is that uh, in the general uh, in the general sense, it's not quite an iso. more physical so it may be true for a general vector space but here if it's a uh um, class so if there is a vector space so if there is a vector space uh, yeah So in the, it's not quite quite an isomorphism uh, in the sense that for uh, this inner product space, uh, the uh, dual of that inner product space, uh, the mapping may not be unique, you know, constructed. Uh, so if in a general vector space, uh, you can have a finite dimensional vector space, you can have a dual uh, a vector space. But in case of an uh, inner product space, it's not uh, necessary that uh, the uh, dual space might be exist uh, in the general sense. so the theorem which uh, to this effect is that to any linear functional y prime on a finite dimensional 
inner product space so there corresponds a unique vector y in v such that y prime of x is x of y for all x so in general sense so any linear function y prime on a finite dimensional vector uh, in the product space there corresponds a unique vector y in v where y prime is equal to so so we have to prove it uh, in that sense so the proof is uh, simple that we have to choose uh, so i'll just let it be you just uh, see it, uh, how we can uh, uh, so you have to uh, see uh, that there exists a unique vector uh, which satisfies this uh, condition for this linear function uh the, uh, the unique condition has to be uh, shown uh, here in the sense that uh, so if we just uh, sheet uh, for example for example So let it be. Uh, I'll show it. Uh, let it be uh, uh, shown in that sense that uh, that uh, the correspondence. So if there is an element y, and, and there is a correspondence y prime to uh, one to one correspondence between uh, uh, space V and its uh, dual. v prime uh, so so the property of for example elements 1 y1 plus y2 prime uh, which correspond to this y1 plus y2 so and alpha y corresponds to alpha is the scalar but if there is a dual space but that dual space uh, is mm, for the inner product space and inner product space we have uh, constructed as that uh, one of them is uh, remission conjugate so that way you can have uh, this thing uh, alpha y tends to alpha y prime and uh, that's what is also called Uh, conjugate, uh, if you remember, uh, conjugate uh, isomorphism. So in previous cases of uh, that linear bilinear products, so that con conjugate uh, isomorphism should exist for inner product spaces such that each element in this space should uniquely map uh, to the uh, inner product product in the dual space. So it creates. the introduction of hermitian conjugates uh, introduces some one is known as the notational uh, difficulties uh, the, the, but in terms of formal structures uh, the you know change complex uh, normal space the complex space the inner product the, uh, and the dual spaces the mapping so sometimes it involves some uh, trivial difficulties uh, or it, involve some differences uh, once we operate them in an algebraic sense so for euclidean spaces uh, it will create uh, something but uh, unitary spaces uh, so uh, so the differences so the, these differences for example uh, the temptation of writing y1 prime two elements in one space in terms of two elements in the dual space uh, so and if we uh, show if we want to show uh, how the trouble arises that uh, 
that's uh, so if you uh, multiply it by scalar uh, prime into y2 prime so it's equal to alpha prime y1 y2 it should be equal to alpha prime we just get brackets outside uh, y1 y2 or it's alpha y1 prime y2 so these can be uh, different uh, relations uh, uh, and remedy can be clear if y1 prime y2 prime uh, it's Hermitian conjugate of this. So, so once you have, you can just uh, the uh, y two, it's y two y one. So now th this is the sort of uh, the once uh, the difficulties which come out to be there once we uh, have. Uh, conjugate isomorphism which is attached to dual spaces uh, there are some uh, difficulties which are attached to it now uh, if you uh, remember we also had uh, the bracket formalism uh, in connection previously also but uh, that bracket uh, formalism came handy when we uh, tried to uh, study uh, bilinear functions what is known as uh, linear transformation the other is the bilinear transformations and we not, not only uh, how the bracket formalism came handy or useful in understanding uh, the same things now in the same way how can uh, these uh, linear functions how can relate parenthesis uh, versus or versus bracket formalism uh, in in adjusting to these uh, properties of conjugate isomorphism of a space vis-a-vis -vis dual space yeah, so that the mapping should be unique or it has to be constructed the dual space is not necessarily out there existing it has it has to be construction constructed and that should be unique in that sense so for that one one has to as a part of uh, uh, getting something neat in terms of formalism one has to one has to use the words of the book one has to straighten the general relationship uh, relationship between vector spaces and and in the product spaces. spaces so so one has to so you know to make it uh, things the general relationship between uh, the uh, isomorphism is a property for general vector spaces and dual spaces uh, if it has to be shown that there are not some uh, notational difficulties or uh, something uh, to generalize it to inner product uh, species also we have to straighten it straighten it in the sense that whether uh, maybe bracket formalism may be more uh, uh, things might uh, uh, let it things come out we need or linear functionals so for this what we are going to do is uh, for example one way of avoiding this uh, uh, avoiding the unpleasantness which is associated with conjugation is that what we are going to do uh, we we'll define a we we'll define a dual define a dual vector space dual space sorry dual space but uh, it's not dual space it's uh, dual space it's a complex vector space uh, that creates a space or inner product space uh, which has this uh, property for uh, conjugate isomorphism mm -hmm. so with the set of numerically valid functions we can have valid functions numerically valid functions such that should have uh, alpha prime alpha conjugate y x1 
प्लस अल्फा टू बाई एक्स टू सो वो कैन यूज द ब्रैकेट थ्रॉट थ्रॉट कैन यूज ब्रैकेट Out, uh, we can use the uh, bracket x y and uh, the parenthesis is denoted by x y. So if we uh, have to see how uh, the theorems and the required uh, results uh, change the way we, if we change uh, the notation. So what we are going to see is suppose to find something. So inner product has to be added to B. So we have a space, a dual space. The inner product has to be added with some uh, conjugate. Uh, so the isomorphism between B and B star should mean the same as if uh, the space, the dual space, has an uh, conjugate isomorphism is attached to it. And the properties, for example, for example, in the uh, space. Dual space of the basis chi is given by implies the existence of the basis y more particularly x of y x i y i. So every linear transformation, every linear transformation, a of v, a on v, uh, we define, we may define a linear trans, a conjugate linear transformation, a star. So previously, this property uh, of uh, this for uh, this it should be equal to x times. A conjugate of y for uh, every x. So this is uh, sort of uh, the thing we are uh, yeah. So the difference which is uh, existing, uh, for example, uh, the most uh, notable difference, most uh, notable difference, notable uh, difference. Between uh, uh, this uh, conjugate spaces and that uh, original space, uh, which is dual to it, uh, is that, uh, uh, and that conjugate space is basically unity spaces, uh, which is uh, composed of those uh, permission conjugate. So, what is the difference between uh, that space and the normal space? Is that uh, in the unity space, uh, alpha a star. Is alpha prime a star, and which is not normally uh, we have alpha a star. So this scalar is not conjugated. So it's like this. So this is this uh, fact, uh, and would not have a, a determinant uh, of a star. Is a, but we'll have if we had this, we'll have determinant of a star, determinant of a is permission conjugate, and a star are not same as those of a, but there. Uh, conjugates. So these are the uh, notational uh, differences or notable differences once we introduce uh, in how the isomorphism uh, of these uh, inner product spaces uh, uh, have to be constructed. Uh, then these properties 
traditionally we are there, we have to replace them with uh, like these, these, these properties. So uh, it will help us in uh, uh, doing away with a lot of uh, things, uh, uncomfortable uh, uh, things which are attached to it, the previous formulas. And uh, uh, on the endomorphic, anti-isomorphic nature, we have anti uh, minus isomorphic nature, and one of them is uh, anti-isomorphic nature. So it has this thing, and the identity is a is a star star is strictly true. So, uh, for natural, if we construct natural isomorphisms, natural isomorphisms, uh, uh, the previously uh, we had a reflexivity property inside that is equal to A. So, anything, uh, everything we say about unitary space V must also be true for this. Once conjugate and again conjugate and we will get the element back. Mm -hmm. In the same uh, context, uh, this is uh, how we construct uh, linear functionals. We can also have uh, something called self uh, adjoint transformations. But uh, now uh, these we have to study uh, these uh, algebraic transformations or in the context of all uh, inner product species. These self. So previously also we studied uh, adjoint uh, transformations in that general finite vector species in the finite dimensional vector species or in the dual species and what are the properties uh, attached or associated to things, the results and for. But uh, since the triviality, the introduction of this uh, technicality, uh, we, are, we have slightly modified our notation. So, for the sake of uh, those inner product spaces, so we have self, we have to study self adjoint transformation vis a vis uh, inner product spaces. Uh, that's it. Uh, which uh, the class uh, resembles the class of complex numbers. And both system, but one thing is that the the properties of addition, multiplication, multiplication of scalars, zero, one, so they remain the same in that sense. So we might uh, so. Uh, a linear transformation for which A is A star are called self adjoint in real inner product spaces. And the usual word is uh, symmetric. in complex in our product spaces its permission so if a matrix a alpha ig alpha ig are the elements of that uh, matrix uh, So, so if there is a self adjoint, uh, self adjoint uh, transformation, in the orthonormal basis, these are the elements, and if the matrix A is denoted by alpha i j, then alpha i j uh, star should be equal to alpha j. 
the IOS to contribute. Or alpha IG is equal to alpha GI uh, should be here for A goes to A star. So we can we can also verify the converse. It's like if A star is A, can the converse should also be as much uh, clear. <coughs> so if you define a linear transformation A, if you define a linear transformation A by means of matrix alpha ig and an arbitrary orthonormal coordinate system uh, arbitrary in the sense uh, or orthonormal coordinate system in chi why the usual equations then a of to xi. So nita i we can just shoot basically uh, nita i. So we can represent it as in terms of uh, matrices nita g. So we can uh, represent any element. So these are two scalars. This is element here related to the element here and how we can uh, show the transformation uh, of an element in this and this via this matrices uh, which we have defined via this uh, matrices so this is the functional relationship of these uh, elements uh, in these two spaces now there are a couple of uh, maybe not i'll not say easy theorems or trivial but they are easy to prove, uh, which I will try to state only, uh, which uh, to the effect uh, the terms uh, may be, uh, for example, so if A and B for one series, if A and B or self and joint then in a necessary and sufficient condition the necessary and sufficient condition that a b or b a b self and joint is that a b is equal to b a or it means a b and b a should come uh, or self adjoint in itself so this is uh, as simple as that so the proof can be two line proof or one line proof you can uh, do it yourself this means a b is b a then a b star is b a star it's also, if you remember the uh, the adjoint of a two, this is so a b. So you can say a b star is b a star. Uh, the order doesn't matter. Or b a is equal to a b. So if a b star, so is a b. So what will it lead? It will lead to A B star. So it will lead to what? It will lead to A B A B is equal to A B star. B is B star B star. This is uh, the, the, the the proof is very much uh, you can see it here. In the same way, the second theorem I will not uh, prove. You can see. An exercise. So if A is a self uh, adjoint, if A is self adjoint, then B star A, B, 
is also uh, is is self adjoint is self adjoint for all b adjoint for all b and if b is a uh, and if b is self adjoint sorry if b is not self adjoint if b is invertible and b star ab is self adjoint then a is also self adjoint then a is self adjoint Now we can uh, so uh, if you can you say uh, the proof is straight uh, a is a star then this is this number so you can see the proof is uh, really uh, is not uh, that complicated. Now uh, there is some uh, triviality associated to sometimes not only we have matrices we have skew we have Hermitian matrices we have skew Hermitian matrices uh, a so how can there the a i j is minus a j i so in case of skew uh, hermitian matrices how we, uh, the notation how would we can uh, represent it uh, the notation so if there is a matrices or or if there is a linear transformation a which is expressed in terms of b and c and uh, b one of them is self adjoint and other one is skew so uh, skew hermitian or skew adjoint can say uh, is that so what will uh, this uh, decomposition be uh, the decomposition for example if we define b in terms of a plus a star by 2 and c as a minus a star by 2 so this is this uh, self adjoint and this is skew skew is defined as a matrix a plus a star this is a minus a star so this uh, this uh, notation will pan out with minor differences of minus for example uh, for example then what will uh, b star be so for b star it will be this a will become a star so a, a star a star it will come a back it will be this for C star, it will be A star, uh, it will be A star, A star, it will be A star by 2. So here you can see, C is, uh, if you just, uh, C star is, if you get minus back, it will be A star minus A by 2. So C star is minus of C. So this is the only difference. So it will be equal to minus of C. So this is the uh, notational uh, difference where n. So we can multiply Hermitians. Uh, simple way of getting skew Hermitian is once is uh, and just multiply iota is equal to minus iota root of iota such that uh, a so if you want to get a skew Hermitian uh, matrices, you have to simply this is minus because of the factor of minus that's also equal to minus one is equal to iota uh, root of one it's iota square. So you can always multiply it by uh, this complex conjugate iota to get a skew Hermitian matrices. So iota is root of minus one. So. So in case of complex case linear transformation A can be written as B plus iota is going to B plus iota C. Thus iota came because of this minus factor can be absorbed here as a part of notation. And there is also something called polarization uh, is there. So before uh, working, there's another interesting theorem. Uh, uh, 
childish. Right. Third series. Uh, necessary and sufficient condition for the, uh, that the linear transformation A A or military space B permission is that A X X B real for X for all X So if A is called A star, so a necessary perception condition for linear transformation A on a unit space B gravitation is that A x x B real. So this is, this is true. So we have to show it simply that uh, if A is A star, so if you define this in bracket things, the property of linear uh, linear transformation, if it is like this, x, you just, if you flip this elements, so the other becomes conjugate. But the notations we have defined, it's a x. We define it uh, its bar on the a x x, so that uh, so that so that <coughs> uh, a x x is equal to its own conjugate. Uh, uh, so it's real. So a x x is a x x bar, or it's equal to x a star x is equal to so a star x into x. So that uh, you just uh, take. A outside the brackets, then uh, A and A, you can write it as A minus A star. A minus, so you can get it A outside, A outside, A minus A star um, into X of X is equal to 0. For all x, and from this, so this is star is equal to this star. So this is a necessary and sufficient for linear transformation is that a. So we have proved this condition in that sense by these uh, properties. Uh, sense. But the important difference is that uh, this term four uh, is not true for real inner product spaces. So this is the point. So the whole point of uh, doing all this exercise is that once you change the notations and once we have defined uh, the properties this way, the way we defined previously, and there are some results which can be true for uh, then we have skew Hermitian conjugate. When we have those uh, conjugate properties, which are applied to these linear transformations, they may hold for complex these uh, vector spaces or complex inner product spaces. They not be necessarily true for that. This property may not necessarily be true for the real inner product spaces. Uh, uh, to to uh, show it to the point. And further, since we have always shown uh, previously also. In the properties of and we define that uh, term uh, that in Quachin was located. So there was a property that uh, uh, that, that product uh, is always a uh, semi-definite 
these uh, properties. Yes, means it's greater than or equal to zero. The product uh, modulus of A, modulus of B uh, is great, always greater than or equal to zero. So the same uh, property uh, can be extended to the positive transformations. Positive transformations greater or less than one. So, so if we have two uh, necessary, so we can uh, define or consider uh, so maybe uh, the definition is that a linear transformation uh, transformation a on an inner uh, product space is positive in symbols a greater than zero if it is self adjoint if it's self adjoint and if a x of x is greater than or equal to 0 for all x such that uh, you can, uh, if you just follow this term a is greater than 0 or a minus b is greater than 0 or a is greater than b or b is less than a so it's a sort of a uh, metrical uh, characterization uh, so, but uh, I'll leave it as a definition uh, so you can read it and try to just think over it uh, read some passages from the book uh, So the algebraic rules of uh, combining the positive transformations uh, and these uh, self-adjoint uh, transformations can be uh, they are uh, similar. So just as an exercise in this section of the book and how we can have these uh, transformations with a positive uh, definite thing. So I'll stop here.